This week's episode, we have one of the Hallmark Channel's leading ladies, Nikki Deloche. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about understanding that one of the biggest mistakes people make is taking failure personally. The truth is, failure is a big part of life. There is no one on this planet that has never failed in the course of their lifetime. Even some of the world's greatest leaders failed their way to success. The more you're able to learn from failure, get up, brush yourself off, and keep going, the faster you'll be able to reach your goals. Imagine trailblazers like Elon Musk or Albert Einstein took the first no they received. If they did, we wouldn't know their names today or benefit from their knowledge and accomplishments. Successful people use failure as motivation and fuel to try again and become better than they were yesterday. If we won all the time and never lost or failed at anything, what excitement would we feel when we finally accomplished something great? The reality is only when we know what failure feels like can we relish in our triumphs. As Dennis Waitley quotes, failure should be our teacher, not our undertaker. Failure is delay, not defeat. It is a temporary detour, not a dead end. Failure is something we can avoid only by saying nothing, doing nothing, and being nothing. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, you actually have another series coming out, The Curious Caterer. Uh, so let's let's talk about that and your role and what fans can expect. <laughs> Absolutely, it's called it's super fun. It's based on a series of books called the Goldie Berry um, Mysteries. And I'm doing it with Andrew Walker, who's, mm. you know, like my brother. We love working together. Um, it's so effortless. And I think that that's, it's such a gift whenever you don't have to worry about all the other stuff. I know he's going to show up and, and do his job. And he also is the same way that I am with the crew, you know? He makes sure that everybody knows that they're important and they matter. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have American actress Nikki Deloche, known as one of Hallmark Channel's leading ladies and a fan favorite amongst viewers. She will be starring in The Curious Caterer, Dying for Chocolate, set to premiere on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries, April 10th. Nikki, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I am doing great. I've had a lovely morning. I just got back from um, a 90s convention, oh, which, wow. was, which was really fun. Um, just, you know, was able to reconnect with people that grew up, also grew up in the industry. And I hadn't seen some of these wonderful humans in a really long time. So it was a really fun weekend, just celebrating the 90s and the glory, <laughs> all the glory. <laughs> Very nice. And speaking about the 90s and the industry, I know one of your first gigs was the Mickey Mouse Club with Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, just to name a few. So let's take it back to the beginning and that experience. What were some of your fondest memories of being part of the Mickey Mouse Club? You know, I think starting at the very, very beginning, you know, I grew up in a really small town in South Georgia which is lovely and it's amazing and it's just, it's so wonderful. And also there weren't any kids really that wanted to do what I wanted to do. So when I got to the Mickey Mouse Club, all of a sudden I was surrounded by all of these people that were interested in the same thing I was interested in and they yeah. wanted to sing and dance and perform and, you know, run away, run away and join the circus, so to speak. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, you're, you're also like me. And so I felt this level of being home in a way, which was really nice mm -hmm. to feel, I think for any kid, you know, where you, you're interested in things that are different than other people. And then you find other people that are interested in the same thing. It's just, it's such a nice feeling. And, you know, also I would say just, um, 
the weird thing was is that we worked really hard. We worked, you know, in that last season, we were working six day weeks and putting on three live shows a week. Now, SNL does one live show a week mm -hmm. and we did three. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we worked really hard, but it never felt like work. There was so much fun. We, you know, would escape into the park. We were on the back lot of MGM and we would escape onto the lot and ride rides on our breaks and come back. We had a blast on that show. And I think I was able truly to walk away with um, an education in anything and everything I would ever want to explore in the industry, which is truly remarkable. Um, and it's allowed me to pivot in different ways in my career. I've done music. I've, um, which involved recording in a recording studio and being on tour and doing music videos and live performances. And I've also done comedy and drama and now I write and I produce. And so I, that show really gave me such an incredible foundation to be able to go and explore and do anything I wanted creatively in my life. But I yeah. think the most important thing that I learned and walked away from is this idea that everybody gets a turn. We're all on a team. Mm -hmm. You know, you there were weeks at a time where I was just a backup dancer or, you know, I would just go and be in a skit with someone and then other weeks where I would get a solo. And um, everybody took a turn having that moment in time. And so you really learned that whenever it was somebody else's moment, you were just there to support them and help them to shine in every way possible. And I think that that set the tone for how I wanted to exist in this business from from there forward. If I ever got a hand up or a leg up in any situation, I wanted to also pull people along with me and make sure that they also get to be a part of it. And, and also just learning how to really work on a team. Um, it, 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 I just, I could go on and on and on to be honest about the things that I learned and what an incredible experience it was. Yeah, well, it sounds like an incredible experience. And I think, you know, doing that at such a young age, it really shaped you as an actress, you know, and it prepared you for the industry. Because as you said, you were spending a lot long hours on sets. Um, you're mm -hmm. around like minded people. So I love that. Let's let's fast forward to today, the Hallmark Channel. I love it. Um, I actually watched <laughs> one of your movies yesterday. Me and my mom. Loved to binge. Yes, I, we love to binge watch and all the feel good Hallmark movies. Aww, <laughs> and I'm a big fan you. of your work. Yeah. So so, you know, you've been in front of the camera. I know you're also, uh, you executive, executively produced a couple of movies as well. So let's talk about that and that you wear different hats in the industry. Uh, do you plan on uh, producing more movies as well? Yes. Um, you know, I, I feel like I, I spend at least half of my time now um, producing and, and, and writing. I, I'm also writing now. Um, my writing partner and I have a partner who's incredible and my perfect partner. I'm so blessed to have her. And uh, we're writing two scripts right now, um, one for Hallmark, one for a different network. Um, I, I'm so lucky because, you know, years ago, whenever I was first beginning at the network, um, I've always wanted to produce. I've always wanted to write. I mean, since I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, coming into the to Hallmark world, I had spent a year at a, as a creative executive at a production company where I learned a lot about the business of production. Um, I spent 12 years as an acting teacher, breaking down scripts and character, not to mention like the experience on set. And so um, I really have been kind of moving towards this my whole career. And I love it. I love taking the seed of an idea mm -hmm. and developing it and creating a story and characters and then watching it go from that seed to a script and from a script to hiring actors and a director and a crew to watching it come to life in front of you all the way through to the editing process where you do that final pass on the movie and um and then you see it come to life on your tv or on your movie screen um the whole process from start to finish i just i love it so much and hallmark really gave me an opportunity to step into that um position at the network and um i'm just so, so grateful. Mm -hmm. Do you find it difficult balancing being on screen and, and as well producing the movie? Because in some movies you were doing both. 
That's true. Um, <laughs> last year, last year, uh, well, with several movies actually. Yeah. I've done both. You know, the key is a really good director. Yeah. A really good director because, you know, for me, it's like taking off that, the hat, like, you know, but also I think I'm naturally, like when I'm on set, I'm naturally kind of watching everything that's happening and making sure, oh, wait, do we have this prop or that prop? Um, are all the actors happy? It's something that I kind of naturally did even before producing. Um, you know, just making sure everyone, if you're the number one on the call sheet in, a many, in many ways, you even without producing, you set a tone. Mm -hmm. for how your days are going to look and what the, you know, uh, how we're all going to treat each other and how we're all going to work together. And if you move into that saying, hey, we're all a team, nobody's better than anyone, you know, forget the number one, number two or whatever on the call sheet. We're all doing this thing together. Um, I think from the, if you just set that tone all the way through, it really allows you to take that producing hat off at times, especially when you have a, an amazing director and just be an actor for that moment, right? Until you have to, you know, put the producing hat back on and put out a fire. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's just really about knowing that at the end of the day, you know, you're responsible for making sure that you make your day. Yeah. <laughs> you're part of you're part of the team of people that are responsible for that. And that just requires like, you know, it's stamina, um, focus, and also, again, making sure that everyone knows that they have agency. So we all are responsible for for doing these things. And I think if you, you know, if you set out and that's your intention on each movie, um, it's really easy to kind of weave in and out of all the different positions. Yeah, I love that, that you also, you know, you work with the team together. You're not just micromanaging, you're relying on your team. Because I guess with yes. movies, especially or anything, you know, the teamwork makes the dream work, right? Yes, the team yes, effort. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. it really does. And then you also, you know, you're empowering other people to like do their jobs to the best of their ability. And I think everyone has a better experience overall. If everyone feels that they matter as much as they do matter, that's the thing. You that's one of my favorite things about this industry or doing a movie or a TV show. Every single person's job on that set matters. And without one element of that, everything kind of suffers, right? Mm -hmm. Um and I think if you, you you begin with that intention, everybody gets to have a great experience. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I know that you actually have another series coming out, The Curious Caterer. Uh, so let's let's talk about that and your role and what fans can expect. <laughs> absolutely. It's called It's Super Fun. It's based on a series of books called The Goldie Berry um, Mysteries. And I'm doing it with Andrew Walker, who's, mm. you know, like my brother. We love working together. Um, it's so effortless. And I think that that's it's such a gift whenever you don't have to worry about all the other stuff. I know he's gonna show up and, and do his job. And he also is the same way that I am with the crew. You know, he makes sure that everybody knows that they're important and they matter. We're all working together. He's kind, he's generous. Um, that really matters to me on a set. It's not just your talent, but how are you treating the people around you? And um, we're very similar in that way. So it was wonderful to be reunited with him on this. And um, just to talk a little bit about it, I, I, you know, I play a caterer who is uh, just a little too curious sometimes for her own good, which I love. Um, I, my favorite thing about her, and I think, I, I, I hope that people take this away from the, the movie as well, is just um, like they call her the citizen detective, right? She's always kind of like, you know, uh, she smells something or she, you know, gets curious about something. And she really follows that lead. Mm -hmm. But I think that curiosity is this lost um, characteristic in our society. I was uh, reading something where, you know, this uh, group of professors in college were saying that the, the hardest thing they were up against with their students these days was a lack of curiosity. They just wanted the professors just to tell them the answers. Yeah. You know, and I think in a culture where we're so used to social media and people telling us what we're supposed to think or do or wear or put on our faces or what's cool and what's not cool. And we're so, you know, we've gotten so used to just listening to the outside noise 
we've stopped thinking for ourselves and we've stopped being curious about things. And that's the thing I love about my character, Goldie Berry. She is so curious about everything. And because, you know, I always actually, even before this series, I would say that chefs would make good detectives because of their attention to detail. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Goldie is a natural citizen detective because, you know, as a chef, she just has such a fine-tuned attention to detail. Yes, very nice. I know it's coming out April 10th, correct? Yes, it's yeah. coming out April 10th on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries, um, 9, 8 Central. Ooh, very excited to watch it. And by the way, you and Andrew have great on-screen chemistry. It's such a pleasure to watch you guys together. I watched The Perfect Catch yesterday. I know you produced that uh, as well. Yeah. <laughs> The Perfect Catch is one of those movies that, you know, uh, at, just getting back from a, a convention where there were, you know, Hallmark fans there. The Perfect Catch kept, it constantly is being brought up as like, you know, one of everyone's favorite movies. And um, it's just so nice because that was also a movie where it was really a double hander. Usually that lead role, you know, you have um, the majority of the film, but in that movie, I was so happy because Andrew really was equally as centered in that movie as my character was. Mm. And um, I think it was the beginning of being able to, you know, tell equal A storylines, you know, with the male and also the female in their lives. And it was just a great movie to do. Stephen Monroe, who's a wonderful director and a dear friend directed it. Um, Andrew and I were reunited with our friend, my, my sister, my sister wife, um, uh, Lisa DeRue, who's actually a uh, lives in Vancouver. She does a lot of Hallmark movies and a lot of movie, uh, TV and movies in general. She works constantly. And we just had a blast on it. And so we equally had as much fun on this one. And I think what audiences are going to be excited about for The Curious Caterer, especially because, you know, Andrew is such a fa fan favorite um, to all the ladies out there, <laughs> is uh, they're going to be really excited to see him in a way that they've never seen him. He's rough around the edges. Um, he's a little, like, you know, tough and abrasive to deal with at mm -hmm. times, um, where they're really used to seeing the happy-go-lucky, um, mm -hmm. the guy who's wooing the, the woman. Um, that's That's really kind of stripped away from him and he kind of gets to dig in a little bit more and um, it's really fun to watch and he's really good in it and we you know we had a delightful time doing the movie it was sometimes uh, work feels like work and sometimes it feels like joy and this felt like joy from start to finish very nice well I'm very excited to see you guys back together in this movie and two of you are going to be magic I know for sure so I'm excited to see it thank you, thank you. I appreciate Absolutely. And, you know, as well as being a successful actress, I know that you give back as well. Um, you're part of the Alzheimer's Association in honor of your dad. So let, let's talk about that and what it means to you. It means everything to me. It's, you know, probably the biggest reason why, you know, I work and I love to work and I'm so blessed that I get to do something that I love for a living. And But so much of it is to be able to service, um, you know, service philanthropy with the Alzheimer's Association and I also am a board member of another organization called Mind What Matters where we give grants to caregivers um, who are taking care of people with Alzheimer's and dementia and um, it you know my my lost my grandfather as well to Alzheimer's and then my dad got a very rare and aggressive form of dementia called Pick's disease and uh, we think, according to the doctors, he was pro he probably got it in his 50s, which is so young. And then he mm -hmm. died uh, last year on July 27th at 66 years old. And, you know, the thing with Alzheimer's and dementia that I think um, now we're really starting to pay attention to, for the longest time, it was just considered an old person's disease, right? Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, you are 87. Well, you've lived a great life. And... You know, uh, it's sad, but you've lived a great life. And now uh, uh, the, the pattern has been, especially over the last five to 10 years, is people are getting it at really young ages. I know people in their 40s that have been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and dementia. And so it's something we really have to pay attention to. It's not just in, in genetics. I mean, genetics are actually really a, a smaller portion of it. It's, it's actually the food that we eat the lifestyle that we live, 
um, the trauma we experience that's not healed or mended. Um, you know, and there's an incredible book called the, the Body Keeps the Score where you can really read about the effects of trauma and what it does to your body and your brain. And trauma actually will shrink your hippocampus. So there's so much that we are learning now that's causing dementia and Alzheimer's and the projection of how many millions of people that are going to be living with this because of the baby boomers and the next 10 to 15 years is astronomical and they're calling it the next health crisis not just in the united states but in the world so we are trying to at the alzheimer's association and at mind what matters really try to do everything that we can to raise that money and to put that money into innovation and to research to try and find i think it's going to end up being something you know i'm not a doctor but i think it's going to end up being something like cancer right in the beginning when cancer first started there was no cure for cancer and now we have you know we have these um medications and ways to treat cancer and you can survive it now in fact a lot of people are surviving cancer and i think it's going to become something like that um so you know it's important to donate it's important to become an advocate and if anyone in your life is dealing with this you know please take a look at the alzheimer's association or mind what matters there's a wealth of information that you can find there um, that will help you and also help your loved one Oh, okay. Very interesting. I, I'm surprised to hear that it's not just genetic and that, you know, no. it, it, there's a lot of different factors. Uh, you know, I, I love that you're giving back and that you're part of this and being a voice for causes that matter because it's, it's so important to use your platform, you know, to inspire what you are. And, you know, speaking about inspiration, um, I created this platform to inspire audience, to uplift them, to watch a show yeah. that feels good. And, you know, I want to ask you, what is one thing that failure has taught you in your career? And for someone watching that's going through failure and maybe discouraged by it or, you know, m maybe feeling stuck, what advice would you give for them? You know, I've had a really, it's a, a real dance with failure. So first I want to say that anybody out there that is really struggling with the feeling of failure, I know it so intimately. I was raised in a family where coming in second was not an option. Mm -hmm. You know, I could play the best basketball game. I, you know, I was an athlete when I was younger. I could play the best basketball game. I could have, you know, got 20, 30 points on the board and great defensive game, but miss one layup and I would hear about it mm -hmm. <laughs> after the game was over. I wouldn't hear about the good stuff. I would hear about the one layup that I missed. So it really actually wired my brain in a really negative way um, to be able to deal with just going after something and that feeling if you didn't get first place, right? Or if you weren't perfect. Yeah. So I've had a very, you know, interesting relationship. And, and to be honest, it's kind of like anything fear. You know, we all don't like feeling scared, but fear can also be a great motivator. It's really about becoming in control of your emotions and in control of your feelings, because I believe that we were all given all of the emotions to feel for a reason. Right. But it's up to us to move through them in a way that is healthy and positive for ourselves. So the way that I have really pivoted with failure is what ended up happening, to be perfectly honest, what ended up happening is I became a person later on in life that was terrified to try things. For example, take auditions. I mean, I will go on 20 auditions and I might not get one of them. So you're up against that idea of failure. If you don't get the job, you know, 20 times yeah. or rejection. So I really had to pivot and I became really scared or ang very anxious to even try something. And I really got clear on like, am I anxious to go do the audition and be in front of people? That's not what it is. What I'm anxious and scared about is that phone call that says, ah, it's not going your way. Right? Mm, yeah. And that became not okay for me. So what I had to end up doing is really pivoting my relationship with failure. And I put it in quotes because at the end of the day, you know, for me, if I'm doing the very best that I can, if I did my best job, my best work, you know, then it's not failing, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. it's just somebody else's turn. The other thing I will say to that is, um, you know, I practice with my kids now to build to build a healthy relationship with 
failure, I will say to them, I want you to get out there and do one thing today that you're going to fail at, that you're just going to flop. You're, you know, it's not going to be great, but let's just get out there and do it. Because if yeah. you're not scared to fail, you're not scared to risk and you're not yeah. scared to take a chance. So I think it's about honestly rewiring your brain to really think about failure in a different way. And because if you're not scared of it, you are willing to just like leap off the cliff and just let the chips fall, chips fall where they may, right? Um, and then trying something new or putting yourself out there doesn't feel so um, hard and painful and, and, and riddled with anxiety. Instead, it's fun. It's about the experience. And then whatever the outcome is the outcome. But as long as you're doing your best and you're having a great time, I think that's the the most important thing. Mm, absolutely. I agree 100% with everything you said, you know, and I like the fact that you said, you know, we're meant to feel these different emotions. Actually, the intro of my yes. show today was inspired by my nephew because we were playing a game and um, a board game and he lost and he really internalized it and he was so upset. And I yeah. explained to him that, you know, if if you didn't lose, you wouldn't it wouldn't feel good to win, right? If you, if you don't know what failure feels like, winning doesn't have any meaning because you know that's what makes winning sweet is because you you know you've done the work you went through failure and then he was like that's yes. true if i went all the time it wouldn't be fun and it just kind of reminded oh, me with what you said yeah <laughs> that is such beautiful advice that is such beautiful advice that you gave him and it also reminds me of something that brandy carlisle i was listening to an interview that she had recently with glennon doyle and she's she's super competitive too and by the way i'm still uber competitive it's just with myself. Yeah. And um, she said something about it. She's like, yeah, I'm uber competitive, but I want, I still want others to win too. Yeah. So like, I want to win, but I want others to win too. So what that does is in a card game, right? You're the one that loses in that, or board game. You're the one that loses in that board game. It's like, oh, shucks. But also, man, I'm so happy that you won. Good for you. Yeah. And it really makes me happy whenever I see that it reflected in my eight-year-old, where I see him do this all the time with his four-year-old brother, where, you know, Hudson will lose a game and he'll go, and Bennett will win. And he'll go, oh, Bennett, that's so awesome. You won. And he's so supportive of him. And then at school, I hear he's such a good teammate and he's such a good friend to other kids. So I think if we can teach our kids like you just did, you know, um, to have a different relationship with failure, we're setting them up for a lifetime of personal victories and also being able to be there for others when they have their personal victories. Absolutely. And I, I'm a big believer in the law of attraction that when you yes. want others to win, that you win, right? Because you're bringing that same energy yeah. back to you. So yeah, yeah. I, I think it's really important to teach kids, especially at a young age, that failure is okay. It's part of the process. And, you know, everyone's time comes at some point, you know, you're going to win too. And it's okay to cheer people on and be happy for them because that will bring more success to you as well just that energy of being uh happy for somebody so yeah <laughs> it's so true and, and i and by the way i love what you're doing i oh, love you. that you're putting such goodness and positivity and hope out there i mean thank you. <laughs> there's never been uh, we've never needed it more so yes. you know thank you for what you're you're doing with your show it's oh, really important thank you thank you yeah i really wanted to create a platform that's positive because there's so much reality shows there's so much which is all fine which right. is all fine i mean i love them too but i do feel like there's some, there's a there, there's a platform that needs to be um done that you know that yes. encourages people to show people that you know failure is okay that you know, that you can, that anything's possible. Is okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's okay to be sad. It's okay exactly. to have fear. It's okay to do hard things. Like, you know, life is really a series of hard things. And that's why we have to find the joy because we have to really get used to finding the joy in the midst of those hard things. Because if we think that life is just supposed to be easy and not, you know, full of hard things, then we're, we're going to be up against the wall a lot. But if we go into life knowing that, hey, we're going to have to come up against some hard things um, and that's okay. That's just life. But what we're going to do 
inside of that is we're going to find meaning inside those things. We are going to find joy inside those things. And when the good times come, we're really going to soak it in because we're really just preparing ourselves, giving ourselves more energy, more fuel mm. to deal with that next hard thing that we're going to have to deal with. Um, so it's just really important. You're giving people the fuel, right? To, right. to just reset. <laughs> Yes, I couldn't have said it better. I, I think that everything you said is so true. You know, it's just enjoying every step because, you know, a lot of the times during when you when you fail, those are the moments that you really have a choice to, you know, make something positive with your life or and, and make new changes, right? That's usually when, only when you're forced into it, do you make new changes and that leads you often to success, so. <laughs> it's so, so, so true. That's another incredible point about failure. The things that you learn, I've never really learned by succeeding. Yeah. I mean, I've learned some things, right? Like, oh, that was really successful because, you know, but all of my biggest life lessons have been learned in the midst of rejection and mm -hmm. failure. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Nikki, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's such a pleasure. Um, congratulations on all your success. You're a fan favorite on the Hallmark Channel, and I love to watch you. Everyone loves to watch you, so we're really excited uh, for your new series. And uh, I'll be watching for sure, and we hope to have you back on the show soon. Oh, I would love to come back, and thank you for those kind and very, very generous words. I really appreciate it. Hack TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Hey, you can fly high,